Spiders, skulls and centipedes set the perfect mood for this game. It looks like it came out on the PS1 and it plays like modern Doom. So how can this one level arena shooter be one of the best designed games I have ever played? Developed by Sorath and released in 2016, Devil Daggers is an emotional roller coaster for me. It's a pretty obscure game and the development team shares some DNA with Dust Force. However, just like the game itself, they are shrouded in mystery, with very little online presence as they prefer to keep the focus on the game rather than on themselves. Naturally, that only made me more curious and after enough digging, I'm happy to say that I managed to get on an actual call with one of the developers. But they wish to remain anonymous, so I won't be using any clips from our call. So, Devil Daggers is the kind of game that oozes style from every aspect of it. It's the kind of game where the lowest FOV is 85. The gameplay is super simple. You're thrown in an arena and you're asked to survive for as long as you can as the game keeps throwing enemies your way. Once you die, submit score to leaderboard and notice that your friends are better than you, like this specific friend of mine called Surfshark VPN. And it just so happens to be the sponsor of this video. Now, if you've ever seen the message not available in your country while trying to watch a video, then you probably wished you would have had access to a VPN. In this case, with Surfshark, you can change your virtual location and easily access and unblock streaming platforms. And that also happens to come with a bonus of getting different content libraries from around the globe. Or alternatively, when you go to your local cafe to write dialogue for the characters in your game, make sure you stay safe on that public Wi-Fi with Surfshark VPN. We don't want anyone to steal your password, or worse, your plot twist. So when it comes to online security and freedom, give Surfshark a try, because you can get 83% off and 3 extra months for free if you use the promo code MENTALCHECKPOINT. Link should be on the screen right now. Surfshark VPN will help you avoid unnecessary content restrictions, but sadly it won't be able to help you avoid demonic flying skulls. So for that, let's get back to Devil Daggers. So even though on paper it's a first person arena shooter, the gameplay is not actually about aiming accuracy, but instead it's a game about strategy and prioritizing targets. I was told that the core thesis of the game was to make the player feel like they are always on the edge of being overwhelmed. Now, even though it's a simple gameplay loop, it has heaps of depth to its mechanics, and I want to highlight a very cool thing I noticed about this game. Every single element in Devil Daggers is designed with intent. From the art style to mechanics, enemies, level design, and even the audio, every component in the game has a well thought out purpose. The developer said that he likes to go back to old Game Boy games because there are so few buttons on that system and there's a lot to be learned from that. So he was really inspired by that minimalism and subtlety, you know, less is more. So the arena, enemies and guns would be considered to be the core elements of the game. And yet they're very simple in nature. I noticed that in a lot of cases, the first and worst go-to solution to make a game feel bigger than it is, is to add power-ups and unnecessary complexity. And that's a very easy trap to fall into without actually benefiting the gameplay. But Devil Daggers very carefully avoided that trap. The arena, for example, it's a simple circle, and that's it. There are no other levels or shapes, and it never changes because it doesn't have to. It would have been very tempting to make these square tiles go up and down over the course of a run to add variety, but I don't think it would make the game better. Same thing goes for the weapons. A similar game might feel the need to add multiple weapons that you can switch between with the need to reload, but not in this game. There are no weapon pickups and no reloading necessary. You only have your left mouse button to fire. Tap it once for a shotgun blast or hold it down for a continuous spray. And those two types of using the same kind of weapon were thought out in such a way to be complemented by the enemy behavior, which just like the other elements has proper intent behavior behind it. I was told that weapons are as good as the enemy design. So let's talk about those flying skulls.
Compared to other games, there are very few enemy variations in Devil Daggers. 12 enemies in total to be specific, and after sampling some high scores from the leaderboard, I managed to calculate that a majority of players only see 4 enemies in their playthrough. I was able to figure that out because as the in-game timer ticks up, enemies spawn in a specific order at a specific timestamp. Their spawn location is randomized, but the timing is the same for all players in order to keep the leaderboards relevant. When you start a game, the first thing you see is a squid tower in the distance, spinning slowly and very creepily, as it spews out a handful of angry skulls that start homing in on your position. The small boys always follow you in a predictable pattern and are rather slow. They are pretty much the first and weakest enemy in the game, but they introduce you to the concept of prioritizing enemies. Dealing with them right away is easy, there's not that many of them, but if you leave them unattended for a while, they quickly add up and form a pretty big skull cloud, reinforcing the decision making aspect of this game. Then there's the centipede. It looks awesome and its underside is covered in red gems. More on those later. It moves in a sine wave pattern which means that if you time it just right, you can get under it and perform a very satisfying thing known as a centipede scrape. Later on, a beefed up version of the centipede shows up that actually challenges your movement and positioning, but I'll let you get to that point yourself. And in the meantime, there is one more enemy I'd like to talk about. This fucking spider right here. It's introduced at the same time as the first centipede shows up, which is done on purpose and if you don't deal with it quickly, it starts spewing out these green eggs that burst into tiny fast little fuckers. This game really leans into phobias. But compared to the other enemies, the spider has a special power. In order to make those green eggs, it must absorb one of those red gems you've seen on enemies before. And this brings me to the progression mechanics of Devil Daggers. Most games offer you upgrades in the form of health or shields of sorts, but not in here. There are these red gems embedded in enemies as well as structures like this squid tower. Those act like weak points and you can shoot them to destroy the tower, but also have the gem pop out in the process. Now, due to all the other games you've played before where you collect something in order to power up, you probably expect to run into the gem to pick it up, but you don't. You see, in order to collect these gems, you have to stop shooting, and that makes you quickly absorb any nearby gems while also leaving you in a very vulnerable position as you can't use the only means you have to defend yourself. It forces you to make a decision on doing less damage now so you can do more damage later, and I think this complements the game's mechanics very nicely. Now you probably understand the dynamics behind introducing the gem sucking spider at the same time with the gem fields centipede. You can also get gems from this type of skull that spawns in the very beginning of the game and as you pass a certain threshold of collected gems, you level up. This allows you to shoot more daggers and also slows down time for a few seconds so you can clear out any immediate threats. The interesting thing is, regardless of how many gems you have or what level you are, all enemies kill you in a single hit. Even those weak small skulls. There is no health bar, no three hearts and no health pickups. If anything touches you, you're dead. And that includes the squid tower structures as well. Which, by the way, these towers are a great example of design with intent and depth. In a different game, it would have been easy to put these towers on a timer. They come in, spew out enemies and then despawn. But in Devil Daggers, you as the player have the agency over when you take out these towers. When I first started playing the game, I was taking them down as soon as I could in order to avoid being overwhelmed by enemies as they keep spawning them. But later on, as I got better at strafing and learning enemy behaviors, I started keeping them around on purpose in order to farm those red gems, allowing for strategies to emerge out of a simple design decision like this.
These towers also slowly move towards the center of the arena over time, which gives you the information of how long they've been around at a quick glance. And here's a super nerdy detail from the designer himself. The towers slowly spin clockwise, which gives you an advantage if you circle the arena counterclockwise, as the chances of lining up with the gem weak point are higher that way. And going around the arena in a counterclockwise manner puts enemies on your left side, which lines up with a threat detection area in the right side of your brain. And regardless if this ends up making a difference or not, there was design thought that went into that decision, which I absolutely love. Just like the interesting design choices of the endgame. Once you get through all the enemies the game throws at you and you beat the final boss, you are met with endless looping waves of enemies that spawn faster and faster. And when you reach that point in the game, you basically start seeing the matrix. You become one with the game. You also start getting these homing daggers that are like a consumable resource and they allow for a little bit more slack in your aim accuracy. And the current best Devil Daggers player told me that this is basically speedrunning in reverse. Instead of optimizing your time, you optimize the use of your resources, trying to use as few homing daggers as possible while maximizing the number of gems you collect. And this change of mindset going from early to late game is very interesting to me, but there is one specific aspect of this game that doesn't change and it's executed beautifully, and that is the sound design. If you go dig in the game's files, you'll notice that the audio alone takes up 92% of the installation space. So audio is used very carefully in this game, designed to emphasize awareness and gameplay itself. Whenever an enemy spawns, it is accompanied by a very specific sound effect. I actually like these sounds so much that I'm just going to play a few right now. Now, combined with a directional audio effect, this gives you the ability to immediately tell which enemy spawns and where, only going off of your headphones. It's like a spidey sense, but skulls. On top of that, every enemy has a looping and droning type of sound, and these were designed to take up different slots on the frequency spectrum so they don't overlap. This in turn allows the player to tell them apart more easily, and their volume and priority also changes based on how close the enemy is to you. For example, this big skull that chases you at high speed has a very distinctive evil laugh that becomes obvious when he's right behind you, telling you immediately to turn around or you'll die. Audio is also used as a confirmation feedback for player actions, like performing a successful bunny hop plays a little sound effect. And it's also used for setting the tone, with four subtle but distinctive droning sounds emanating from each of the four sides of the arena. This gives you spatial awareness and that feeling of walking around a 3D space. And Devil Daggers is filled with little intentional details like these. I can't figure out how to smoothly transition from one to another, so here is a laundry list of them instead. The player is always emitting a yellow light, which causes nearby enemies to light up and become more obvious on your screen. And the overall retro looking art direction was there from the very beginning, reinforcing the gameplay. Which by the way, what do you think of this pixelated PlayStation 1 look? I personally love it, but I'm curious what's your thoughts on this in the comments. Moving on. The background is left black on purpose in order to contrast against the brighter enemies, making them stand out even more. Using your shotgun fire mode is a good way to deal with the skull cloud, but if you aim at the ground in front of you, the daggers reflect off of the ground spreading in an even wider radius. There is not only a shotgun jump, but a double shotgun jump if you know how to pull it off, and there is also a technique called shotgun tech that allows you to overwrite the firing cooldown with some very precise inputs. 
enemy VFX blood splatters stain the ground in a dynamic way, allowing for the entire arena to get covered in blood over time, which, by the way, I'm working on an even more in-depth video on the topic of creating VFX, so make sure you stay subscribed for that one. The game doesn't have an explicit tutorial, but the enemy spawn order kind of acts like one. The spider and centipede combo I mentioned earlier is a good intro lesson to how gems work. And when you first open the game, you're presented with a dagger in front of you. This is the game's way of making sure you got the hang of the movement keys before throwing you into the mayhem. All of this designed with player agency in mind rather than spoon feeding you information. So all of those details come together to reinforce that core design thesis of making the player feel like they're always on the edge of being overwhelmed. And in my experience with the game, as I was being competitive with my friends trying to beat their high score, I noticed that my heart rate was directly linked with my current run timer. I found myself sweating and shaking uncontrollably every time I made a small improvement on my highest score, even by a fraction of a second. So in that regard, the game absolutely nailed the feeling of being on the edge of overwhelmed. But as a final note on the intentional design of this game, if you go on the leaderboard and you watch the replay of the current best run, you will find out that the best Devil Daggers player in the world was killed by the weakest enemy. And I think that's good design.